Good morning and welcome to Unity Way Church. Happy Sunday and also a happy new year 2021. And we are going to affirm it's going to be an exciting, healthy and prosperous new year for all of us here at Unity Way Church. Our opening affirmation is from uh, Daily Word, February the 6th, 1951. Like a current of electricity, the life flows through me. I know that I am renewed. Again, like a current of electricity, the life flows through me. I know that I am renewed. What a powerful statement of truth, especially as we go into this new year. So I invite you just to become still for a moment and just breathe in that idea, that divine idea, that the life force is flowing through us in us and as us. And we know that we are renewed every single day, every single moment in our mind, our body, and our soul. So again, I just invite you to let that seep all the way down to the roots of your soul, to the divinity within each and every one of us. And at that center, we know there's only one power and one presence, one life, one substance, only one understanding of truth. And we know that we are the Christ. So this morning, let's claim that Christ understanding. Let's claim a healing this morning that sometime during the service, we will experience a healing on some soul level. Whether we are aware of it or not, we know that whenever we spend time in truth, a healing always occurs. So we can just breathe that truth deep within your soul claim it as your natural birthright it's our divinity speaking and we know that to be so because there's only one presence and one power and we just say the mantra we use here at our church which is thank you God and so it is amen and now our daily word with Cynthia good morning the daily word is dream, and the affirmation, I turn my dreams into reality. Some of the most audacious, bold, history-making events began as dreams, born in the imaginations of those who understood the promise and potential, potential of humanity and worked to realize their vision. Even if my dreams do not change the world, they have the power to change my life. Today, I remember those whose dreams were fueled by their hard work, faith, and determination. I look to their example when my dreams feel far away and I'm running low on hope. I rekindle my dreams through my imagination, which keeps them vivid. My strength helps me remain committed to their realization, and my zeal renews my enthusiasm to work toward creating the life and the world of my dreams. And from Joel 2:28, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And again, the affirmation, I turn my dreams into reality. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. And a perfect daily word for this Sunday that goes right along with our talk. The, uh, my talk this morning is entitled Focused Responsibility. Very important theme that we're going to be discussing this morning. But first, I'd like to uh, sync up with Silent Unity. Silent Unity, since 1890, someone has been sitting in a chapel or in a room holding that sacred space. And right here, right now, this Sunday morning, someone is sitting in the Silent Unity Chapel holding that high watch for all the individuals who have contacted Silent Unity in prayer. And they hold that vigil 24-7. And again, that legacy has been going on day after day, month after month, year after year, since 1890. And we really owe that dream, that, that power of prayer demonstrated for each and every one of us that we're never alone, to Myrtle and Charles Fillmore. And we know that's being uh, held right now back at Silent Unity, the Silent Unity Chapel at Unity Village. So let's sync up energy-wise. 
Let's feel that presence that we are supporting them here at Unity Way Church. We're also supporting them at uh, Silent Unity, the chapel, that individual in that chair. And also we're supporting again ourselves and all this congregation that we will feel the magne magnetic pull of truth in our life. And again, we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Oh, do I have a good comic funny for each and every one of us. And I know as we've been spending a lot more time kind of at home lately, that this will speak to you. And it, the caption says of the woman, do you know how bored I was today? I came this close to actually cleaning the house. And I know we all have had that feeling, whether it's cleaning the house or the garage. But sometimes we just don't do it. But that is it's part of our journey. We need to have work and rest, work and rest. So again, comedy is good for the soul. We need to step back a little bit, even though we are in serious times. But let's not lose our sense of humor. It's something that we truly need, each and every one of us. And I think sometimes, especially even in our study of truth, we don't laugh enough. One of my favorite stories is Charles Fillmore was known through all his t years when he was at Unity teaching, and even after he retired, any meetings that he held, he was always telling traveling salesman jokes. And uh, he always got a laugh out of them. And I think we need to have that laughter in our life more, especially now, as we're in these times that we're in right now. So we just say thank you, God. This morning, we will be discussing focused responsibility. Who's responsible for your life? Who do you think is responsible for your life? Is the Christ you are? There's no outside teacher. There's no outside deity. There's no outside uh, guru that you need to visit. The power is within us. We self-transform our own lives. And that's really where focused responsibility comes in. Because we're focused on the truth that we know and we use it in our life. And by taking responsibility, we truly become a repeatable Christ. First of all, I'd like to define what responsibility is. Responsibility is defined as opportunity or the ability to act independently or make decisions without authorization. And I'm here to say spiritually, we self-authorize ourselves. That's right. As a Christ, we self-authorize ourselves to take responsibility for our life, meaning that we control what we think, what we feel, and what we say. We respond differently. We do not live in a world of knee-jerk reactions. I would like to share some insight with you, and this is from a very famous uh, psychologist who is actually in, at um, a concentration camp during World War II, and his name is Victor E. Frankel, and he, he gives us an insight that really pinpoints what we'll be discussing this morning. And Victor says, between stimulus and response, there is space. In that space is our power to choose our response. Who is making the decisions in our life? Are we allowing other people to make our decisions? We shouldn't be. We choose how we're going to respond. And as good Unity True students, we respond with focused responsibility. We focus on the truth. We know the good is there, and we affirm it to be so. And we take responsibility for living the life that we choose to live. In our response lie always our growth and our freedom. You see, in our responses lie growth and freedom. Responsibility, this is an interesting question I'd like to share with you. Responsibility to which nature? Our Adam lower nature or our higher Christ nature? You see, the Adam nature has a response and the Christ nature has a response. Which one are we going to use? Which one are we going to use? Which one have we been using? We can change today we can make a different change and think differently and respond differently if we choose and take deep, deep insights into focused responsibility in how we want to show up, how we want the experiences to be in our life. 
We will, when we take focused responsibility, we build self-esteem. We build our own self-esteem up and we bring balance into all aspects of our daily life. We all need self-esteem. And I'm not talking about being narcissistic. I'm talking about being the Christ. I'm talking about being a responsible human being. I'm talking about being a responsible Christ. Our fears about what others think of us are projections of how we view ourselves. It's not that we don't know what's being said around us, but we don't knee-jerk respond. We know who we are, and if we are so concerned about what other people are thinking, what happens is we must realize that we're projecting that. We're projecting that fear, and we're blaming somebody else around us. That's not how we want to show up. That's not how we want to live our life. I'd like to share a letter, and this is from uh, St. Paul, and this is from the letter, or, uh, it's from Titus, and it's chapter 2, verse 7. And this is the insight that he's going to be sharing with us. In all things, show thyself a pattern of good works. We want to respond between that space, before we react, we always want to realize that that space is filled with the God presence of absolute good. So why shouldn't we be responding in a positive manner? Focus responsibility. It's looking at our life projects and also our uh, commitments to start, to develop, and complete. As we're entering this new year, we're going to have new projects we're going to start. We have things that we're going to develop and bring forward. And we also have projects that we're going to complete. So my question is, whatever you do starting this day, this Sunday morning, let's put focus responsibility, that divine idea that we're going to use the truth that we know. And we're going to enjoy using the truth, speaking that truth. I want to share also that even in, in dark life circumstances, we've all had circumstances that are not to our liking. We know that when we go through those tough situations, they had character patterns, and if we weave in a positive truth attitude. See, our response is very closely related, just like our thoughts. Thoughts and feelings are very closely related, and especially in focused responsibility as true students, we get to choose how we're going to respond. We learn how a maturely loving focus uh, brings responsibility in all of our acts and behaviors. Are you a responsible soul? Are all your behaviors as a mature adult? Are you acting the way you should as a mature Christ soul? Only you and I can answer that question. And if it's not as much as we think we should, let's roll up our sleeves this Sunday and let's start putting to practice this idea that we need to show up as mature Unity True students. Choosing our intentional silence. People who choose to be silent is not the way you want to do it. Meaning that if we're in a conversation, there's a time to be silent. There's a time to be still and reflective. But we need to realize that if there is a time for silence, that it's done with a positive attitude. And we're doing it to maintain an equilibrium where we are in a situation. So we're just not spitting out words. We're not just spitting out responses. We're thinking about what we say. We're thinking about how we're responding. From the Jewish scriptures, and this is the great book of Psalms, and this is chapter 34, verse 8. Put God to the test and see how kind he is. See for yourself the way his mercies uh, shower down on all who trust him. I am here to say when we trust principle, when we trust law, when we trust truth, we can truly live and truly show up as the Christ we want to be. Meaning that we are going to show up in situations in a way, in a manner that really allows us to be who we have come to be. When our physical or spiritual bodies are out of focus, our responsibility vibration of harmony, it causes a disease in our frequency. See, when we're off-centered, when we're not really standing firmly on the law of absolute good, we're off-balance. And when we're off-balance, we think a little bit off-balance. And when we think a little bit off-balance, we uh, respond in our feelings a little bit off-balance. So we first have to remember that we're the Christ and know that with res uh, 
with responsibility to show up as that Christ, we need to monitor our responses. We need to monitor all aspects of our life. And it's a frequency. It's an energy in which we live. And when we live in this uh, frequency of responsibility, it gives us a vibration of wholeness, a peace and tranquility in all aspects of our life. That doesn't mean all areas of our life are going to be perfect. There will be creases, but we are able to stand up and be who we've come to be. Seeking a focused responsibility attitude magnetizes our energy. The more we're in alignment, the more we are dialed in, the more we are focused on the responsibility of creating the life that we want. It magnetizes the universal elements around us and brings into our field of attraction people, circumstances, and events that we want, that we need, and that we desire, and we truly deserve. Also, in focused responsibility, we can start focusing on healing, focusing on self-healing, and that connects us with the vibrations of the universe. How much time do you spend self-healing? How much time do you think about healing, healing your own self? I'm not talking about praying for others, but praying for your own self, praying for your own healings. We should be spending more time going deeper into our meditation periods, realizing that we self-heal by truly having responsibility, a focused responsibility on our life and realizing who we are. I'd like to share some insights with you, and this is from an individual, Navai, and it says, or she says, one day I realized everything I get out of life is exclusively a result of my actions. That is the day I became a man. I think it's very important because I think many of us grow up wanting to blame. We want to blame the animals. We want to blame the weather. We want to blame, blame, blame. When you're blaming, you're not living in a focused consciousness. You're not really living. You're not controlling or directing your life. You're living as a victim. And as we know, victims really have no power. We're metaphysicians. And when you're a metaphysician, that means you have focused responsibility to understand the truth that we teach. There's only one power, one presence. There's only good. And we use it and we live off that truth consciously. I will say that self-justified negative feelings and thoughts may be justified. Many of us have justified our negativity. Well, if you were in my situation, you would have done the same thing. But I'm here to say, you don't grow. So when you justify your negative behaviors, when I justify my negative responses, it's really stunting our growth. We're in a new year, 2021. Let's stop justifying things that don't need to be justified. We release them, let them go, and we can think differently. We can image differently. We can feel differently. We can change our relationships. Truth is, our life is about us, not them. I'm going to say that again. This is the truth we teach. Our life is about us, not them. It's not that we don't care what's going around. We don't care about our family or our circumstances. But our life is about us. We are here to take responsibility. We're here to be the Christ. Not just an idea or a book on a shelf. Are we going to claim it this morning? Let's use this Sunday to claim it. To make this Sunday different. Resolve to say, and this is an interesting mantra I'd like to share with you. Today I remember I am my focused response. My I am excuse me. Today I remember I am my focused responsible attitude. We are responsible for the attitudes that we hold. No one else. And I don't care if your mother gave them, your family, your uncle, family of origin, whatever country you're from. Let's change that. Let's turn that page. Let's go into a different understanding. Let's respond. In that space, we can choose to think differently, create a new pattern. I'd like to share a story that really brings this out about responsibility. It's a true story, and it's Bernard L. Brown, Jr. Bernard L. Brown, Jr. worked in a hospital where a patient uh, knocked over a cup of water that spilled on the floor next to the patient's bed. The patient was afraid he'd slip on the water, so he asked the, nurse, uh, the nurse's aide to mop it up. 
the patient found out very quickly uh, that the hospital policy is small spills uh, were the responsibility of the nurse's aides, while large spills were to be mopped up by the hospital's housekeeping. The nurse's aide decided the spill was too large and she called for housekeeping. She loved this story. The housekeeper arrived and declared the spill was too small. So you have one saying it's too big, one saying it's too small. An argument followed. You got to picture this. We're in a hospital room here. An argument followed. It's not my responsibility. You ever hear those words? The nurse's aide said, see, it's a large puddle. The housekeeper did not agree. Well, it's not my job, she uh, snapped back. The puddle is way too small. The exasperated patient suddenly took his water pitcher off the table next to him and dumped the whole thing on the floor. And then he said to both of them, hey, is the puddle big enough now? He asked, it was, and it ended the argument. Who's responsible? And I think in many ways, even in that kind of comical story, why don't we want to claim responsibility? You know, metaphysically, we can look at that story. In our life, we have problems. They're like a puddle. They could be big puddles or small puddles. The key is we want to fix them. We want to apply our truth understandings to those puddles. We don't want to get in a back and forth, uh, who, blame, why, blame. Let us solve the problem. Let us solve the situation. So again, metaphysically, we have all puddles, some puddles, again, big and some small. Let's this morning make the promise to ourselves that whether the puddle is big or small, we're going to take responsibility and we're going to clean it up. We're going to change. We're going to use this situation to better our life. And we can do that. Robert Schuller, the great uh, preacher of the famed Crystal Cathedral, shares some insights about responsibility. And he says, The walk of faith then focuses on the finishing touch, the final dab of the artist's brush, the fine tuning of a tightened string. So again, how focused are you? The definition of a focus is where your attention is. Are you focused, laser focused on a situation, on a thought, on a feeling? We should be as good Unity Truth students, laser focused on the power of absolute good. On our divinity, we should be focused all our attention, all of our daily attention, realizing who we are, who we are. When we apply a focused attention, our responsible attitude comes over our life. It changes our life, changes our prayer life, and it changes the walk we do with spirit. We're walking with spirit every day. We're growing and expanding. That doesn't mean that we're always perfect, but every day we're trying to live. We're attempting to live. We are willing to live willing to live and seek our highest understanding of truth, meaning that we're going to be responsible and we're going to focus and live from a truth consciousness. We need to, in this understanding of truth, practice acting in unselfish, loving ways, which is a way we bring that truth focus and responsibility attitude in all aspects of our life. So this is our life. We're not play acting. This is the real deal. So if you're having a bad day, you have a spill, whether big or small. Let's think about it. Let's take a breath. Maybe we have to walk outside, go check the mailbox or something. But let's deal with the situation from our highest understanding of truth. Both you and I can do it, and it really will change the vibration of the situation. A truth-focused responsibility and attitude is like a muscle. The more use, the more it develops. I truly believe this. The more we use our truth, it changes us and it truly becomes our second nature. We really don't want to be selfish. We do not want to tell lies. We don't want to say or exaggerate the truth. We want to be honest. We want to be authentic. We want to show up as who we are in a loving, kind, and compassionate way. So we need to develop that muscle. We need to develop attitudes that are in alignment with our divinity. And this is some wisdom, and this is from Abraham and Esther, Jerry Hicks, and this is some insights on focused responsibility. 
There is much more of you that is in harmony with your core than you realize or that most of you allow. What I love about that truth, again, it's there is much more of you that is in harmony with your core than you realize or that most of you allow. You notice the words allow. Who's not allowing us to show up the way we want to? Who is not allowing us to dream the dreams that we want to dream? Who is allowing us not to be the Christ that we believe that we can be? It's not them out there. It's not Charles and Myrtle. It's not the Buddha. It's not Jesus. It's not Muhammad. It's us. We need to take focused responsibility of our life and truly mean it. It has to do with them as thinkers and their personal development. If someone is having a challenge and you feel that they're projecting their negativity or frustration on you, you don't have to fix them. That's their growth opportunity. But that doesn't mean you have to have a knee-jerk response. See, living in a focused, responsible consciousness, again, you respond differently. You don't have a knee-jerk reaction. I told you so. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Don't let the door hit you when you're leaving the house. I mean, all those phrases are not phrases of truth. Those are not the responses that we truly want to live with, that we don't want coming out of our life. And I will tell you, even if you don't speak those responses, your energy will tell the people where you're coming from. Remember, in truth, energy does not lie. So be authentic. Be honest. Really be honest with yourself. Delmore Schwartz shares some insights about focused responsibility this morning. In dreams, begin responsibilities. Again, in dreams, begin responsibilities. Let's stop blaming the snake in the Garden of Eden. Let's stop blaming, again, whoever we're going to blame. Let's claim responsibility. Because unless we take responsibility for our lives, we really can't be the creative souls we've come to be. We have this cosmic Christ understanding within us. We can think the mind, we can think out of the mind, out of the consciousness of divine mind. But we need to be responsible and match our vibration with that divine mind. We don't want to think out of the atom conscious mind because that is a tit for tat, even exchange, pure victim consciousness. That's where most of the world lives and that's not where we want to live. Remember Jesus said to be in the world but not of it. What he meant is bringing in that third not living in a third dimension consciousness, but bringing that fourth dimensional consciousness, the kingdom of the heavens, into our life right here and right now. Making heaven, allowing heaven to be here right now. Which means in dreams begin our responsibilities. Which means also that we need to practice for our own selves, self-forgiveness. You see, self-forgiveness is a gift that we all need, that we all want, that we all desire. Everything we give, we give to ourselves. Remember the old metaphysical truth. We eat the fruit of our own tree. Metaphysically meaning the thoughts and feelings that we bear fruit with, we end up eating them. Somebody else doesn't. We think somebody else does, but they really don't. We're eating the fruit, which meaning we're eating that negative energy. We're eating that complacent energy. You can't have compassion if you're complacent. You can't have compassion if you're not wisdom-filled, if you're not responsible for your own journey. And if we've made mistakes, we stop, we reevaluate, and we start over. We can start fresh. Soul freedom is a simple, focused responsibility formula. We self-serve our own souls daily. And what I mean by self-serving our own souls is that when we remember who we are and we have a prayer practice and we take classes with Reverend Mike on Zoom and we are willing to read books, read devotionals, read the daily word, not only in the morning but at night before we go to bed, when we're willing to take Take responsibility for our own spiritual journey. Shift, shift happens. Shift changes within us. True shift happens. And that's really what we want as good Unity True students. I'd like to share some ideas with you about what we focus on. Are we focused on the problem or opportunity? Are we focused on the call, the cell call we're on right now, or the person standing right in front of us? 
Are we focused on a complaint list? Oh, come on. I know you have one, even if it's not on paper. We have a list. It pops out sometimes. Or the things to be thankful for. Do you every day do a thank you list, a gratitude list? Are you focused on society's good or just talking about all its negativities? Are you focused on your goals and your dreams? Or are you still whining about the obstacles before you? Are you focused on past scars or new healings? Do you want to be healed? It's one of the questions Myrtle used to ask people who would come see her for counseling. Do you really want to be healed? Uh, be careful where you put your focus. This is real true metaphysics. Because where you put your focus, it truly is how we con it controls our responses. And that response is our greatest focused power. The greatest attribute we have as the Christ is how we show up. What we speak, what we think, and what we feel. And the energy that we hold. The energy that we are. The beingness of our divinity. I'd like to share with you some insight, and this is from Delmore Schwartz, and it is. Order and disorder, form and formless, must have profound psychological roots, nervous roots. We need to let go of stress. Let 2021 be the year we let go of stress. Let go of fear. Let's breathe into each day knowing that we're blessed, regardless of what's before us, regardless of doctor's appointments, regardless of what's happening on the TV. Let us breathe into a new understanding of truth. And may that truth give us a focused understanding that we are here to live the life we choose to live as a good metaphysician. Let's stop being victims. When we set our sights high with responsible focus, we focus on optimism and we know the universe responds in kind. We know the law of mind action or it's called the law of attraction. We bring into our life experiences what we think, what we feel, and what we understand in our life. No one's doing anything to us. It's a vibration. It's a magnetism that we bring into our aura, which becomes our experiences. So let's be responsible. Let's be responsible about the thoughts and the feelings and the images that we hold. In even the dreams, are your dreams positive or are they negative? Are they positive or negative? Robert Schuler shares this wisdom. Life ceases to be stale when we dare to come up with a new recipe. 2021, it's new year. Do you have a new recipe for your life? Are you going to look at your life differently? Are you maybe going to get up 20 minutes early? Are you going to start praying in the morning and at night? Maybe praying in the afternoon after lunch? Are you going to take really control of your life wherever you are? Regardless of your age, are you willing to take control and live with the divinity within you? Only you and I can answer that question. As we expose our mind to new truth disciplines, which is studying truth, our life philosophy truly accommodates and we absorb new creative avenues of responsibility. We want to be responsible. We want to be responsible because that's how we change our life. A focused responsibility, truth, is scientific. It's a scientific attitude. And it is both choice and behavior. You see, when we have choice, and we also show up in the behavior that we want, because choice and behavior are like cause and effect. Again, focused responsibility. And from Albert Einstein, I'd like to share this wisdom. And I know you've heard this before, but I'd like to just let it soak in because I think it really uh, fits into this idea of focused responsibility this morning. We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Who created the problems? It's not Einstein. It's not Adam and Eve. It's not the talking snake. It's us. We allowed ourselves in some situation to not think clearly. One of the things, the truth, it allows us to untangle our mind. Ask the Holy Spirit within you, in you, to untangle your mind. If there are things that you don't understand, things that don't really make sense, pray within you to let them untangle your mind. We are on the leading edge of our own thoughts. Think about that. We are on the leading edge of our own thoughts. We are creatively involved or not. 
Again, we are the ones who are creating our life. And if we don't want to live in a creative way, we have no one to blame except ourselves. A focused responsibility is an attitude that aligns, again, all of our energies. It's within us. Let's tap into that divine reservoir, that Christ within us. Walt Whitman, who is a favorite of all New Thought teachers, especially in the 1800s, shares this idea, which fits in perfectly with our theme this morning. And Walt says, Let your soul stand cool and composed before a million universes. Those universes are in us and without us. It's all around us. We live in a universe, the micro-macrocosm. We are here. Let's enjoy the life we have. Let us truly be different. We surely should. And no matter where it is, let's be cool and collective. Let's not lose our head. Let's not have a hot flash over it. Let's respond differently. And when we do, we see things different, we hear things different, we feel things different. Because in a focused responsibility, our truth attitudes truly change and allow us to experience daily miracles. 2021, this is a new year. Are you looking for miracles? Are you looking for miracles to unfold in your life? You should be, because that's what truth allows us to do. If we put this truth to the practice, Whatever authentically satisfies our holy souls is our focused responsibility. So today, whatever you feel your focused responsibility is, do it with love, do it with compassion, do it with zeal. Whether it's cleaning the litter box or cleaning up uh, landmines outside with the dog, whether whatever it is, cleaning the windows, do it with zeal, do it with a new understanding, do it with a new response. Which leads to each and every one of us, we re-examine who we are and we re-examine also what we've been told. And even if we've been told things that are not true, we have the power to dismiss them. And I'm here to say anyone who says something or insults your soul divinity, it's not truth. It is not truth. So in closing, I would like to say, I exist, you exist. And again, the great I am that I am is one who's speaking. It's the only God presence right here and right now. Again, I am forever more than enough. Each and every one of us is more than enough. And again, I am focused responsibility demonstrated. This Sunday, let the I am within you allow you to be focused and take responsibility for the life, for the joy, for the excitement for the dreams, for the possibilities for this year. Let us truly live as the Christ, which means that we will live in a new understanding of focused responsibility. And Myrtle just had to go someplace, but she's safe. And I will just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. This is the time in our service where we have the opportunity to uh, take our love offerings, our gifts, or our tithes. and invite you, invite you to take whatever your gift may be and imbue it with the responsibility of your soul. I want you to allow that energy to flow through you so when you are blessing this gift which you are giving, and that it goes out into this universe, into our Unity Church. It goes back to Unity Village and all the Unity uh, activities that we do and we tie to back at Unity Village. Daily Word, Unity, Minis Unity Ministerial School, uh, Unity Village, Unity Worldwide Ministries. All the things that we do to, that support us, that keeps us living in focused responsibility. And if you join me, please, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. And if you just join me again and say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now our prayer of protection. May we say this prayer. May we feel this prayer. May this prayer truly be the response, the energy of our souls this day, not only on Sunday, but for the week to come. If you join with me, please. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. May this Sunday be the Sunday we roll up our sleeves and truly live this day to the best of our ability 
with a focused, responsible attitude to our own divinity. We're divine. Let's live it. Let's be it. And we'll see you next Sunday. And again, we just use the mantra here. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. God bless.